Hey. Hi, everybody. It's so good to be here. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Kilmer, for inviting me. It's so nice to see a former professor in the back also, Wakima. Uh, yeah, I'm so excited to be here today. Just a little bit about me. This is me when I was one. I immigrated to the United States when I was one years old. Um, I'm a mother of three. I graduated from UT uh, back in 2005, so it's really nice to be back on campus. Um, I've taught uh, a couple of classes also, intercultural communications and Arab American culture. And again, I have a degree in communications and English literature, and also I have a master's degree in education. And this is me and Dr. Kilmer. <laughs> a couple of years ago, she invited me to speak to one of her um, classes, and it was really nice to be there, which actually reminded me because I remember he used to wear um, that shirt. Well, not the exact shirt, but a shirt with like a bunch of banned book pins. And I was a student in your class. It was, this is a long time ago, like maybe 2002. And I was like, why would anybody ban any books, um, especially like children's books? And then it's so ironic because then a couple of years later, my book is on a band list so like it just went like full circle um so i just wanted to show so yeah thank you to like all my professors um who trained me to write <laughs> other people's stories because um, i have all of my articles saved uh from years ago i used to write for the independent collegian um that's where i really started out a bunch of like ut articles from oh my goodness such a long time ago like 2001 2000 um, no, I'm sorry, I graduated from UT in 2008. Um, so this was between 2005 to 2008. Um, so yeah, I've been telling other people's stories for a long, long time. Um, and then I also wrote for the Toledo Free Press uh, before it shut down a couple of years ago. Okay. I go back. Oh. Should I just close the tab or is it gonna close everything? Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so I've been telling other people's stories for years and years. Um, and a couple of years ago, maybe in like 2018, I was teaching in a classroom and I just noticed the lack of picture books um, for that had characters that looked like me and my children. And so I wrote one. Um, it's called the Arabic Quilt. And it's, again, it's won a lot of awards. Um, some national awards, some Floyd's Pick Book Award. It's an Ohio award. And um, it was just a really exciting thing to do to write a book because I really wanted my story out there and I wanted kids to see themselves in these stories. Um, this is the illustrator. I just always mention her because she did such a great job with the illustration. And this book is also to give away. So I'm not sure. I, I guess I can put it in the back and if anybody wants to. Yeah, take that. But part of the giveaway, and this is just one of her sketches. And so some of the themes, if you haven't um, read the book, there's immigration, and there's bilingualism. It's really big because this girl moves from Egypt and people make fun of her accent, I guess, and her mom's accent. Um, so there's some bullying there, cultural identity, friendship, and allyship. So there's some themes in the Arabic quilt. And this is just maybe, this is, I'm just gonna read like a few, maybe one or two spreads. At lunchtime, Kenzie is surprised when mama walks through the door. Habibti, you forgot your lunchbox. Habibti, like the Hobbit? Isn't your name Kenzie? Molly Snickers. Her classmates laugh with her as they walk to the cafeteria. Mrs. Hoggins sees tears rolling down Kenzie's cheeks. What's wrong, she asks. Molly made fun of what my mama said, Kenzie replies. Oh, Kenzie, being bilingual is being bilingual is beautiful, says Mrs. Hoggins. Don't let anyone make you feel ashamed. You are special. Um, this is after the teacher announces that they're going to be doing um, a classroom quilt project. Molly is not enthusiastic about, about the project. Who cares about Arabic? We live in America. My mom says we should only speak English. In response, Mrs. Hoggins starts writing words on the board. Algebra, coffee, lemon, sugar. Does anyone know what these words have in common, she asks. They come from Arabic words, Kenzie whispers. 
Mrs. Hagen nods, learning other languages besides the one we grew up with helps make the world a friendlier place. We can speak non-English languages and still be American. So this, again, this was a pretty big theme in the book. Um, and just throughout the years, this was published in 2020, a um, few weeks before the pandemic hit. It was in February. Um, so yeah, just throughout the, even with the pandemic, I haven't been doing a lot of, in per I, 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 this is probably my first in-person event. Yeah, I think this is my <laughs> very first. Yeah, too. yeah, aside from um, like my book launch where, when you came yeah. Um, yeah, in February. So, um, so yeah, these are just messages um, that I get on social media and emails and just how much kids and parents and teachers really related to the stories. I'm just going to read a few um, from Razan here. This is fantastic. Read it to my son's class today, inspired by your new quilt idea. I'm creating designs with Arabic names on, on one side and English names on the other for my son's first grade class. Shokran for the beautiful story. Again, just a couple of more messages, uh, which is always really, really nice to see because it means that my goal for the for my book is working because I wanted kids to see themselves in the story. Uh, this Again, even if um, uh, people who are not Arab, um, just anybody who speaks different languages, uh, like this one, we are a mixed nationality family, uh, Polish, New Zealand immigrants to the U.S. And you read your book, The Arabic Quilt, yesterday at bedtime. My three-year-old instantly yearned to make a paper quilt for our family's name. I'm lucky to have a classmate who is Egyptian-American, and she performed the kind service of transliterating our name. Thank you for the wonderful story. And this is really cute. This is um, their names in Arabic. And this was really recent, because usually <laughs> I always notice um, an increase in book sales when it's around school time because it's, um, it's read a lot during the first couple of weeks at school. So this one, uh, Mrs. Moore tagged me on Twitter. This is why having and using diverse books in our classroom matters. I was chatting with the new teacher, Mrs. Masri. She shared one of her parents is from Egypt. I showed her the Arabic quilt by Aya. She had tears in her eyes as she explained, this girl look like, looks like me. And it's really cute because she, she got a picture of herself when she was young and she put the picture next to Kenzie. So even adults, it's nice that adults can relate to it. And again, this is another classroom. I get a lot of teachers and principals who tag me and show me that they basically recreated the quilt. And so again, it wasn't easy to publish a book. If anybody's ever published a book, uh, I know it's probably different in academia, but it's also challenging in the traditionally publishing world. Um, I got so many rejections. Um, often I'm put on um, incorrect lists, like at the libraries or just online, um, like uh, an Asian book list or whatnot. But it's not because I'm not Asian. I'm North African um, and or Arab. And then also I've gotten a few <laughs> negative messages on my on on Twitter. I've seen like a few kind of mean messages about <laughs> how their kid had to read the book in their classroom and they didn't like it. Um, there's like an agenda behind it, um, which is, I usually just ignore it. But the biggest thing that happened was I found out last year that my book was on a fan list in Pennsylvania and it was, it got a lot of um, attention in the media. It was the York District uh, fan and they just, I think they what they did, they just copied and pasted like a diverse book list and my book was on it a bunch of a bunch of books um and so my friend who is the author of another book that was on the list her um jamila topkins bigelow she's the author of your name is a song very popular book um she also found out that her book was on the list so we're part of a, a group called kidlet in color and my illustrator created this graphic right here she just put the characters of our book together like that. And we just did like a social media blast and we created um, like a press release and saying it's not okay to ban these books. The kids need to see themselves in these stories. And we tagged the school district, of course, <laughs> we did that. Um, and again, there was protests around the country. Uh, these were, there's the organizers there was a lot of really great organizers, especially in the York district um, in Pennsylvania. They, they wrote letters. People were donating these books everywhere. 
And then it led to kind of some good news. Um, my publisher reached out uh, around that time and he asked me, hey, your book has been doing really good for the past couple of years. Why don't you write another book for us? Which is pretty rare in the traditional publishing world. Usually the author writes a book and they send it out to publishers. So I said, yeah, that's a great idea. So I thought, and I thought, and I was brainstorming, what book should I write? I have no idea. I was like, why don't I write about the banned books? Um, since it's kind of based on a true story. And I got, we got a book deal, so we sent it, me and my agent, we sent it to um, the publisher, Tilbury House. And they're a pretty small independent publisher based in Maine, and they bought the book. So based on true events, the story follows a girl and her classmates who plan a protest at their school when they find out the district has banned diverse books, prompting the protagonist, Teta Grandma, to share experiences from the 2011 Egyptian Revolution. So I kind of tied it into the Egyptian Revolution that happened in 2011, because again, it was um, protests. And I have a sample from the book. I just, I couldn't uh, put it on here because it's really like the early sketches, but I'm going to read it and I'm going to pass out the paper just so you can see the early sketches um, that the illustrator, Anaïda, but when she walks into the library, Kenzie freezes. The bookcase where the new diverse books were displayed has disappeared. Where are all the books? Mrs. Hagen talks quietly to the librarian, Miss Jackson. Then she turns to the kids. She takes off her glasses, looking discouraged. Unfortunately, our school district has banned many beautiful diverse books, she says. Many other districts around the country are doing the same thing. Banned? What does that mean? Molly asks. It means those books are not allowed in the library or classrooms, Miss Jackson says. Why would anyone ban books? Kenzie asks. Miss Jackson gropes for words. Some books are so powerful that they intimidate people, she finally says. So I'm just going to pass this around if anybody wants to take a look at the sketches. She's still doing, um, again, the sketches, and this is not going to be published until next year. Um, 2023 fall. So um, it's yes, uh, sketching takes a long time and illustrations take a really, really long time. Um, that's just um, another book that I that's coming out next month. It'll probably end up being on a band list too. <laughs> um, but it's coming out in 2022 next month. Uh, it's just it's a cute little board book for basically like toddlers and preschoolers. It's based in Egypt. And it follows this, uh, the dad and the girl. And then this is my third book that's coming out the night before I eat, A Muslim Family Story. And that doesn't come out until 2023. And again, growing up, I could not find any of these books. I couldn't find, uh, my holidays were not in the books, like at all, on the bookshelves, barely any. Um, so as I, um, I have kids and I could, well, my kids want books. They want to see like Ramadan and I eat uh, displayed and get, getting kids excited was so important to me. So I wrote a Haidt book and I really like it. It is so sweet. <laughs> and it's an intergenerational story between the grandma and uh, this little boy here named Zane. Um, just some um, statistics in children's books. Um, so it's getting better. Now that uh, publishing world is making an effort, but we're still, oh, sorry, the screenshot that I put, um, uh, cover the statistics. Um, but the, so in 2020, 41% of the characters were white, and in 2018, 50% were white. So you can see it's getting better slowly, but again, um, if you look over here, Arab stories are really, really, really small. It's 0.008%, and there's really only, it's getting better though. So it's just really important that uh, people support these stories because then it tells, again, publishers and editors that people really want these books. And again, the other statistics, they're like 12% right now, 2020 is 12% black, 9% Asian. Um, this is a list um, of the books that were banned in the last school year. And it's from the Penn Americas in Better Band Books. I'm just going to show you a couple of because there are so many books on here. I was surprised. I was going through this. And if anybody wants this list, um, 
you can email me and I'll send it to you because then you can support these books by buying it. Again, all of these are picture, just picture books. So imagine all of that, just picture books, and they're all banned just in the past year. So this is this is my book right here, The Arabic Quill. Again, there's a theme. <laughs> Notice what kind of books are being banned. Um, always from marginalized groups, um, of course. Um, yep, right, not quite Snow White, that celebrates body diversity, LGBTQ, um, black stories, Arab stories, Muslim stories, everything. There's so many, so many books. And it's, it's very unfortunate. Some people have told me over the years, like when we found out that the book was banned, hey, like, that's cool, like your book is banned. So people are gonna buy your books more, which is true because there is an uptick in sales, but it's sad because then the kids look for these books in the library. Like I want, I want kids and students to see, to check out this book so they can see themselves in stories. So yeah, take action and support the authors. Open a mind. This was just um, the person who created this um, list. And yeah, that's about it. If you have any questions, just my website is right there. I'm pretty active on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. And you can find my contact information on my website if you want me to send you the link. Well, and I am really. That is all. Thank you. Delighted. I'm so very, very proud of you. Thank you so much for having me.